Hi guys, Alba Ecstasy here with a new episode of uh, music production and synthesis tips and tricks with the most uh, demanded uh, question from you How do I make my sequences? Um, quite simple, I, uh, I can say, but uh, it took me a while to get here and uh, when I uh, prepared mentally this episode, um, I counted about nine or ten elements that uh, helps me to to create my own style uh, sequences. First of all, um, and uh, the first element uh, that popped up uh, into my mind it was that I like my sequences to bounce um, and I will tell you what that means uh, listen, listening a lot of uh, electronic music uh, since my childhood uh, Klaus Schulze, Kitaro, Jean-Michel Jarre um, Kraftwerk, etc. Um, I discovered at some point that uh, if I could make my own sequences I would like to sound like after my first note uh, the other ones uh, should come back and go again and so on and this is what uh, I meant when I said I like my sequences to bounce uh, and probably this was the, the first element that it took me a while to, to get here why? Because uh, even if I was playing uh, some, um, some sequence line it wasn't enough. So, I thought that adding reverb and delay would help me a lot. Let's add some reverb. And still it wasn't enough. So, um, after many tests, I, uh, I discovered that uh, ping pong delay, it was the best uh, feature that I could uh, add to my sequences to sound as I want. And listen now. And um, one very uh, important uh, aspect when choosing the delay, and this would be uh, another element, is uh, about time and feedback of the delay and of course I never uh, sync uh, right and left and uh, never sync my uh, um, delay with uh, the tempo of the scene because I want to have this this bounce, this human touch when I'm playing. So. Here is a short delay response and it won't, uh, it, uh, it won't help. Now it starts to, to, to look like I want. And this uh, little uh, tip or trick um, also uh, provide another element and uh, that would be um, when you have um, a delay um, there are added more notes Pract uh, basically it's the same notes but it looks like you play uh, more notes uh, at once and if you choose the right time uh, you could uh, intercalate you could uh, 
um, layer <laughs> these uh, this, uh, sounds, uh, these notes uh, to, to look like you, you are playing uh, a lot of notes. More notes. This is how we are uh, getting to another element, uh, playing with um, with the filter. Uh, when you are playing with the filter, you can add uh, dynamics to the to the um, sequence uh, because uh, from a very focused sound, you can increase the intensity of the sequence. You can add uh, more intensity, and you can uh, uh, prepare uh, changes of the of the track of the sequence, um, and so on. Another element of uh, of my sequences is uh, playing. Uh, it's playing with uh, envelopes. When you are uh, playing with the envelopes, you can uh, uh, pass from a focused sequence to uh, transcendent one. You can uh, pass from a very straight and linear sequence to a floating uh, type, to a floating mood. Sorry. So, let's let's play uh, the sequence to uh, to here. Contradiction with uh, with a very uh, focused uh, another sequence line. This sequence, uh, when uh, when increasing the uh, ADSR, is becoming port and floating like a wave. Another um, aspect of my uh, sequences is um, how do I uh, make them uh, to sound um, pretty clear and not to to be a mess. And uh, this fact consists in uh, in two two aspects. One is uh, Choosing the right sounds uh, for uh, multiple sequences. Um, one rule that I learned is that uh, you should never have um, similar sounds uh, in your track because uh, it would sound very dual. Uh, all the frequencies will uh, start to to blend and uh, at the end will be a mess. So if you are choosing uh, for a bass, a strong, uh, strong and deep uh, bass. Try to not to have um, 
uh, same texture and to to be up with uh, at least one or two octaves uh, for the next sequence line. Um, another element of this uh, aspect is uh, to to choose uh, the right patterns and to listen to your previous uh, already made sequences. Uh, why? Because if you have, uh, let's say in a C minor, at some point you are playing uh, uh, C, F, and uh, you are coming with another sequence, uh, that will have uh, uh, D or G it will not blend uh, the harmonics will uh, will be a mess so try to to choose um, correct patterns uh, melodic patterns for each your sequences and to to stay in the same scale otherwise it will be chaos in your sequences. Um, another question, um, quite related to, to my sequences, is uh, how do I sync my uh, synthesizers? Well, I don't. There is no physical connection between them, and uh, I only um, listen to. Uh, uh, the pattern and uh, at the right moment not all the time i'm uh, i'm pressing the play button of uh, of another sequencer um, of course all my uh, my synthesizers are uh, set on the same bpm and um, even if uh, if you you think that is impossible well all my synths uh, that I kept uh, have a very precise internal clock and uh, they don't lose uh, uh, measure in time so look here is the um, analog keys sequencing uh, the ARP Odyssey let me unsync this one so, our Odyssey uh, is receiving uh, the sequence from analog keys. Here I have the Arturia K step uh, sequencing the SA02 and the GP08. In this case, I will uh, uh, create a sequence on GP08. They are sequenced. Uh, of course, uh, this is a risky game, uh, especially in a, in a live uh, performance. Uh, but uh, after a few years, I, uh, I discovered that I can manage without a MIDI interface or uh, without making a, a daisy chain between the MIDI in, MIDI out of the synthesizers. Um, why I quit uh, using uh, daisy chain and uh, MIDI interfaces? Because 
uh, at some point uh, the MIDI chain will uh, will explode, <laughs> will stop functioning and uh, if one synth in that chain will not work, not uh, all synths will not work. Also, uh, if I was pressing a play on a uh, ARP and um, I didn't want to to start another uh, another synth, uh, I should. Uh, it was supposed to make a lot of uh, um, settings on all synths, and this is. Um, uh, not encouraging for uh, um, for your inspiration, and when you are uh, when when you want to start uh, a track, uh, is not good. So, I uh, had a lot of scenes, and uh, these ones I have at this moment uh, are those one those ones with uh, the perfect. Um, internal clock. Okay, I think I covered this subject too. Okay, uh, only uh, MSQ 100, being uh, quite old, uh, is losing uh, the tempo in time. So I had to sing with uh, analog keys, and uh, also this was a very good. Uh, uh, opportunity to to have uh, a keyboard to to enter the notes for uh, the two o six. Oh yes, um, any time you can. Uh, play your sequences uh, by yourself, not programmed into a sequencer. Um, when creating in studio, in your studio, you have uh, enough time to to play a sequence by yourself because you are giving um, that slight out of tempo uh, feeling, that human touch that is very important to to create a a real um, warm state uh, to your track and by practice by practice uh, you you will do that very soon but in a live performance if you have the right sequencer use it because it's very helpful and let's enter some notes uh, into the MSQ 100. Uh, rest is here. Hear a bass now. I just lowered uh, one octave uh, the uh, SA02 and it's playing the same sequence as the GP08, but you already uh, uh, have the impression that there are many, many sequences, but actually there are one, two, three, four, and 
that's all. And two of them have the same uh, sequence line. One by one, I will uh, stop them. As you see, uh, playing with uh, the filter, it helps me to, to create transitions and to uh, create fade-ins and fade-outs uh, in my track. Of uh, the system one. 
band is going and I'm lowering the volumes of my scenes. And I hope uh, this will answer uh, all of your questions regarding on how I am making my own sequences. If you have any um, more questions, please uh, write them down below on the comment sections. And uh, don't forget to comment, as I already said, like and subscribe. And if you like uh, my stuff and if you want to have uh, extra stuff, please support me on Patreon. And for YouTubers only, you have um, a new section on, the, on my page, it's a community, where I'm starting to post pictures um, and a lot of stuff <laughs> I'm usually posting on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Have a great week and see you next time. Bye! Thank you.